Zuplo is the best damn rate limiter on the planet. And we're extending that today with the addition of complex rate limiting. So that's in addition to our standard rate limiter, which already allows you to distributed, synchronized across 300 data centers around the world, rate limit by IP, user, or even do dynamic rate limiting where you can rate limit differently for different users based on properties of the request, their organization, or metadata stored in the database. Very advanced. But today, we're introducing complex rate limiting that allows you to rate limit by things other than requests, like potentially compute or gas usage or any other metric that we can see in the request or the response. Um, let's do a quick demo of the standard rate limiter. Adding rate limiting in Zuplo couldn't be easier. We come in here, we add a policy to our um, pipeline. We're going to do rate limiting. We're going to do IP based rate limiting and give the user one request per minute based on IP address. In this example, I'm going to click save. That will be deployed in typically under five seconds and click test and I'll get a 200 okay but then I'll immediately get a 429 too many requests because I've exhausted my one request for the same IP address. If you want to rate limit by user that's also crazy easy in Zuplo. So we just change that to user. Let's keep it at one request per minute and then I'm going to add a jot policy in this case. Let's drag that in front. I will save that change and when we test this now We'll get a 401 unauthorized because I haven't got a JOT token, but I have one handy here. So let's paste that in. For, uh, paste, test, and there we go. We get 200 OK, and then I get a 4292 minute request. That user has now exhausted their rate limit. It's also very easy, and I'll show a demo of this at the end of the session, um, is to rate limit by function. And that allows you to write a little bit of code that dynamically sets what the rate limit is based on the incoming uh, request. But before we do that, let's go and take a look at the complex rate limiter, which can also do dynamic rate limiting. So the complex rate limiter is here, and you notice it allows you to meter by different things or to rate limit by different things. We're going to rate limit by braces, and I'm going to give folks, I don't know, let's say a thousand braces per five second period, 0.6 is about five seconds. And we'll do that by user as well. So I'm going to keep that jot token handy. And why am I rate limiting by braces? Well, you can count anything you like. You can look at the response in a header. You can look at the size of the payload. You can look at some special header set that tells you what the compute was. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to count the number of curly braces in the response. It's a little weird, but you know, I think it proves the flexibility of the platform. So I'm going to click um, OK here. We're going to add a new outbound policy called counter. This is where the magic is going to happen that counts the response. And I'm just going to tidy up all this. We don't need these options because this is a fairly static policy. It doesn't need a lot of configuration. First thing to do is to clone the response. Const clone equals response dot clone. That allows us to, um, to play with the responses stream without reading the original stream and thus messing up the response that goes to the client. Const text equals await clone dot text. And then I have a little bit of code over here that can count the braces in a string. So const count equals count closing braces. And that just takes the text. It's going to give me a number. And then what I'm going to do is use the complex rate limit inbound policy, this, this uh, name here, click command dot and add that to our module up here so it's imported. And then you can see I have a method called set increments. What I do here is I pass in the context and then I pass in a dictionary of counts I want to increase. So we're gonna increase the, the braces count. So braces uh, is gonna be set to count. And we should probably just do a little bit of logging here. So context.log.info uh, count so that we can see our count. So let's go and add this to our pipeline. Custom code outbound, counter, and we do not need these options. Click OK. I'm going to click Save. And I actually have no idea how many braces are in the response from our to-do API here, so I guess we're going to find that out right now. So let's test that. I should get a, uh, hopefully get a 200 OK. Yeah. And in the logs, it says 200. So I think we said 1,000. So let's see. One. So that's another 200 added. 400, 600, 
800, 1,000, and then a 429, too many requests. Because if you remember, we configured that policy to have 1,000 braces, and we exceeded that on the fifth request because there was 200 braces in each response. That is complex rate limiting. That's how easy it is in Zuplo. Both the complex rate limiter and the standard rate limiter support dynamic rate limiting as well. So let me just show you a, a crazy simple example of that. What we're gonna do, let's just use the standard rate limiter for this. I'm gonna go back to my uh, rate limit inbound policy here. Let's configure this. And instead of rate limit by user, we're gonna rate limit by function. And then I specify an identifier, which is gonna look at a, um, a module in JavaScript. Um, and so the module is gonna be dollar import, but it will be, let's see, dot slash modules slash rate limit, what we'll call it, comma here. So that's gonna identify a module that's gonna get called every time we uh, are trying to look at the rate limiter here. So I think I call that module uh, rate limit, it's an empty module. And here's the code I need. And actually, I'm gonna, I call the function rate limit, but let me tell you what this is gonna do. It's gonna look at the, it's gonna key by the user subject. That is the identifier in the, in the job payload or the API key. And then it's gonna use a value inside the JOT token in this case, but this could come from a database, it could come from anywhere, and use that as the rate limit count. So I'm gonna go and change a JOT token here. I'm gonna change the sub to be test, and I'm gonna to add to the payload a rate limit count. So this could, I could do this with braces as well if I wanted to. I don't think you should put your rate limiter in a JOT token. I'm just showing you how dynamic this can be for different users. So we're gonna say a rate limit of three and I seem to have broken something here. Oh, no. okay, there we go. So there is my new JOT token. We're gonna to use that in a second. And I'm just gonna change my policy here to match that function name. So I said default, but it was actually called rate limit. Click OK, let's save all of our changes. Now, because we're not using the complex rate limiter, we actually don't need this anymore, so I'll just delete that for a second. But the same function, the same idea works with the complex rate limiter. We call this dynamic rate limiting. So let's go and test this. We will paste in that JOT token, and I would expect us to get three requests through successfully here. Two, three, and then 429. Too many requests, that's dynamic rate limiting from you from, uh, from Zuplo. The best damn rate limiter on the planet.